It is common knowledge that Assassin's Creed 3 isn't the most popular of Assassin's Creed games, and even for me personally, it's not one of my favourites. Assassin's Creed 3 has received a fair bit of hate from the Assassin's Creed community, with YouTube channels even naming their podcasts after Assassin's Creed 3, such as the Kill Connor Club. Now if that doesn't convince you that people don't like Assassin's Creed 3, then I don't know what will. But the one thing that Assassin's Creed 3 has over all modern Assassin's Creed games is that Assassin's Creed 3 is so much more of an Assassin's Creed game than Odyssey or Origins could ever hope to be. After finishing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I was hoping for Ubisoft to release a new Assassin's Creed game in the old style of Assassin's Creed. And then I came to the realisation that they're so not going to do that, and that I had the season pass for Odyssey, and therefore I had Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, as well as Liberation. So, I just wanted that real classic feel, and after finishing Assassin's Creed 3, I was really surprised. It gave me that real classic feel of Assassin's Creed game, and was really refreshing after playing both Origins and Odyssey. Assassin's Creed 3 is commonly said to be not a very good Assassin's Creed game. It's got a boring protagonist and it's boring in general and everything's just boring. But after playing and experiencing all that Assassin's Creed 3 has to offer, here are my thoughts. Starting the game as Haytham was fairly interesting. I enjoyed playing as Haytham as Haytham was fun and is a great character, and in fact all of the Templars are really well written characters. But whilst playing as Haytham for a few sequences, I couldn't keep wondering when I'd finally get to play as Connor, as Connor's on the box art, he's in the cinematic trailers, Connor is everywhere, and Haytham is not really seen in any promotional material. But when it did come to playing as Connor, I was disappointed. Well, at the start anyway. Connor was moany, whiny, and arrogant. He did have morals, which he abides by, and I respect him as a character for that. He doesn't seem to be shoved around easily, but does what is right. Assassin's Creed 3 on the story side of things is okay. When you're on the hunt for Charles Lee, Connor literally can't go five seconds without saying, Where is Charles Lee? You know, it does get fairly irritating, but I just wished we had more of Haytham and Achilles in the story. Haytham is one of my favourite Assassin's Creed characters, and he's absolutely fantastic. It made me think that perhaps we should have played as Haytham in Rogue, and not Shay. Obviously they'd have to set it in a different time period, but it would have been a really good branching narrative from Assassin's Creed 4, to then Rogue, to then Assassin's Creed 3, if Haytham was the protagonist of Rogue. It's just a brief idea, I just think it would be really good. And in theory, it could be the second unofficial trilogy of Assassin's Creed games, like the Ezio trilogy, but in this case it follows the lineage of three different family members. I don't know, I'm just throwing any ideas out here. If any Ubisoft employees are actually watching this video, take notes people, take notes. Haytham in general was a far more interesting protagonist to say the least, and we only got to experience that for a few sequences. A whole game as Haytham would be really interesting, and I feel like perhaps we should have played as Haytham in this game. Now, Connor isn't a bad protagonist by any means. He's just very one note. It's just, where's Charles Lee? I'll go kill those people. I've got to save my tribe. You know, it doesn't really allow him to express many emotions. And speaking of emotions, Connor doesn't have any. Well, <laughs> apart from anger. You know, Connor doesn't really care when he kills his friend, he doesn't really care when his mum dies. Spoiler alert, sorry about that. Uh, but realistically, he doesn't actually express that much of emotion, and therefore it's quite hard to connect with him as a character. He's very blank. He's a blank canvas that I feel like Ubisoft were hoping we could project ourselves onto, but he was so blank that you just couldn't. 
But then when saying that, all of his interactions with Haytham when they meet later on in the game were really interesting. Those were the parts of the game that I was really invested in and hoped to see more. But by the time that Haytham had popped up, he's dead a few sequences later and you've barely even met with him. It's really annoying the fact that all of these Haytham sequences were left to later in the game, as personally, the late game sequences were my favourite out of the entire game. I just wish we saw more of Haytham and Connor almost trying to rekindle some relationship of father and son, but it not quite working out, because even though Haytham has barely met Connor, he still tries to father him and tell him what to do, and Connor still, in a brattish way, just does what he's told. It's very amusing, and that's the type of thing that I would have loved to see. I would have loved to have seen more of that dynamic, because I really enjoyed it. And then we have Achilles. Achilles was also one of my favourite Assassin's Creed 3 characters. From the moment that I met Achilles, I was like, yes! This guy is going to be hilarious, and he was in a dry, witty humour way. When you first meet him, he doesn't want to let you into his house to train to be an assassin, but after a while, he sort of grows accustomed to you. He becomes your mentor, and I always feel like the mentor figures in Assassin's Creed games are always quite good. You have Belek from Assassin's Creed Unity, he was a fantastic, fantastic character. And then you sort of have Uncle Mario from Assassin's Creed 2, but you know. I found Achilles to be one of the most morally grey characters in the game, because he's no longer really an assassin, he was a former assassin, and now he just wants to be done and enjoy the rest of his life. Well, sort of enjoy, he's living in a broken house, but still. When Connor comes into his life, he is revitalised with the thoughts that the assassins could finally take down the Templars once more. And that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about Achilles. And the fact is, is that Connor literally doesn't care for him. Connor literally is the most bratty person to Achilles. Achilles tries to mentor him, and all Connor can do is lash out and be angry. And then five seconds later be like, I'm so sorry, Achilles. It's just... Achilles has some of the best moments in Assassin's Creed 3, but his humour is definitely akin to someone who likes that type of witty, dry humour. Some of his moments are just fantastic, you just have to play it and wait and see. But then, you know, with every Assassin's Creed game, the mentor dies at some point, and spoiler alert for Achilles, he does. Achilles dies off screen, which is the most aggravating thing ever. It's implied that he is going to die, but I would have thought we would have seen some emotional moments where Connor opens up to Achilles in his final moments, but sadly we didn't get that. The last we see of Achilles is him laying in his bed, and he's rambling on about some woman giving him tea and soup and stuff like that. But that is the last we see of Achilles, we don't get an emotional moment towards the end, which is some of the things that I really wish that Ubisoft did implement, because he is your mentor, he teaches you to become the person that you have become, and now he's just a grave. Literally, the only notion that you get of Achilles even dying is at the very end where there's a grave and it says Achilles Davenport. Literally, that's all we get, no emotional scene or anything. It's just one of the things that really annoys me about Assassin's Creed 3. Some of my personal favourite sequences are sequences 1 through 4, and then 9 through 12. These sequences have more of a influence with the Templars, and the rest of the middle section of the game is more building relationships with other characters like Generals and George Washington, who we'll get onto later with the DLC. But that middle section, it was one of the most unenjoyable parts for me, there were a few good set pieces, however, but I do feel like playing the first few sequences and the last few sequences were the most fun that I had in Assassin's Creed 3, and those were the moments where I was like really invested in the story, and I was really wanting to continue with that branch of the story, 
Rather than meeting characters like George Washington, Putnam, although Samuel Adams was a really good character, I really did enjoy meeting him, but Benjamin Franklin was sort of overlooked in the main game, I feel. Maybe if I did a little bit more of the side content, there'll be a bit more with him. Although he is given a bigger role in the tyranny of King Washington. I'd have to say that my favourite mission in the main story of Assassin's Creed 3 is Father and Son. You escape a burning building with Haytham, and some of the dialogue is absolutely fantastic. I found it so comical, so enjoyable, and it really branched that father and son relationship that Connor is still trying to distance himself from. And it's in this mission that Connor finds out that Haytham wasn't the reason why Connor's village was burnt down and inevitably his mother was killed. In fact, it was Charles Lee on a killing spree as he tried to look for an artifact. So Connor had this resentment for Haytham this entire time when it turns out that Haytham didn't even send the order to burn down Connor's village, which inevitably did lead to Connor's mother's death and Haytham's former lover. And then we have the Tyranny of King Washington DLC. Now going into this, I wasn't too excited and once again my expectations were changed. The first episode was a bit boring to me, to be honest. I wasn't really enjoying the premise of having the whole game sort of restarting but from a different perspective. As you start off as Connor waking up, and therefore the events of Assassin's Creed 3 have never happened, and characters that have died are back alive, and characters that were your friends are in some cases now your enemies. It's quite an interesting premise, and I did really enjoy it. The DLC was a fun bit of side content to toy around with after completing the main game of Assassin's Creed 3 and I wasn't too disappointed, it's just that first initial sequence really held it back for me. Benjamin Franklin also becomes a very prevalent character in the Tyranny of King Washington DLC. As since King Washington has now got the Scepter and the Apple of Eden, he is now in control of everyone and therefore characters like Putnam and Benjamin Franklin are under George Washington's control. And I'd definitely say it's worth it. The premise is very interesting as an alternative reality to the events of Assassin's Creed 3. The main star of the show when it comes to the DLC of Assassin's Creed 3 is the abilities that you get. You can control various animals and use them to your own will. You can use a wolf pack to destroy a group of enemies, for example. I found the abilities to be a good change of pace rather than just relying on a pistol or bow and arrow. You can really stealth your way through in a mission. One thing that always plays on my mind when playing the Tyranny of King Washington DLC it's the fact that the eagle ability where you can hop to different ledges and rooftops and just different places in general is basically the precursor to the rope launcher from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. They are literally the exact same thing but just with a different coat of paint. I found myself getting into the old habits that I had with Assassin's Creed Syndicate and applying them to Assassin's Creed 3. That being, instead of climbing over rooftops and jumping up ledges, just using the eagle to jump up to a ledge instantaneously. It's things like these that made me realise that I'm just avoiding what Assassin's Creed is meant to be, which is doing parkour, and I'm avoiding it by using the eagle ability, even in free roam, outside of missions. But apart from that, Assassin's Creed 3's Tyranny of King Washington DLC has a fantastic premise. I really enjoyed my time playing the episodes 2 through 3, not so much 1, but I got through it anyway. The story is actually really enjoyable and is a nice change of perspective from playing Assassin's Creed 3's main campaign. Now, Assassin's Creed 3 also has naval combat, and the naval combat obviously isn't as polished as what the later entries have brought it out to be, especially with Black Flag, which was the sequel to Assassin's Creed 3, 
and a game that basically revolved around that naval combat, as well as that naval experience. And for a first shot, I thought they did very well. The combat is practically the same as in Black Flag, it's just that you're limited a bit more to the abilities that you have. And I was really glad that they didn't use so many missions for these boat naval combat sections. Instead, they limit them to one or two missions in the entire game, which is absolutely fine, and I'm glad that they did that. I really don't enjoy the naval combat in Assassin's Creed 3. I don't know why, because I enjoy it in Black Flag and Odyssey, but in Assassin's Creed 3, it just feels so restrictive, and I can't really explain why. But I do enjoy the naval combat, and especially when it's in missions and it plays into the story, it's actually quite a fun and enjoyable thing to do. But the thing that you've all been waiting for, I'd say is the parkour. The parkour and the free roam and the open world in Assassin's Creed 3 is one of the most enjoyable experiences that I have ever had in an Assassin's Creed game. The parkour is absolutely flawless. Well, not flawless, but it's bloody beautiful. Climbing through trees or sliding under a table or vaulting over a ledge is one of the most satisfying things I have seen and played in an Assassin's Creed game. I even went back to Black Flag and saw that most of these features were actually removed. Assassin's Creed 3 certainly has one of the best parkour systems in the entire franchise. I'd say it's below Assassin's Creed Unity, but it is still up there in one of the best parkour movement systems in Assassin's Creed history. I absolutely love just running through a tree and then pulling out my bow and sniping a deer or shooting down an enemy. It's really satisfying and I really do enjoy the parkour and movement system in Assassin's Creed 3. It all seems really seamless as you're running through a field and then you vault over the side of a fence. It's one of the most satisfying feelings when playing an Assassin's Creed game when everything just feels right. And in Assassin's Creed 3, everything about the parkour system feels so right. But also in Assassin's Creed 3, you're not only just going to be climbing through rooftops and climbing on trees and everything like that, you're also going to get into a fair bit of combat. And going from Assassin's Creed Odyssey to Assassin's Creed 3 is like a complete 180. I do prefer the old combat of Assassin's Creed games more so in Unity than in the original games. But in Assassin's Creed 3, it's a lot slower paced, and I feel like I'm just feeling like that because of playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where everything is fast and multiple enemies are attacking you at once, and you've got so many abilities to choose from. Assassin's Creed 3's combat is really satisfying, as you have these really cool finishing moves or chain kill moves when in combat. You have to play the combat in Assassin's Creed 3 fairly smart as there are so many different types of enemies that you have to have a different playstyle for each of them. You have your standard officer which are pretty easy to kill, then you have your officers who you can't just attack, you have to disarm them or throw them on the ground, but some of these officers do wield weapons such as pistols so you can use these standard infantry as human shields and then go in for the attack. You also have your brutish characters which are slow moving but do pack a very deadly punch and with those you can either just choose to shoot them with your gun or your bow or you can just throw a smoke bomb on the ground and then just kill each enemy with one hit. The choice is yours. Assassin's Creed 3 may not be my favourite Assassin's Creed game of all time but I can certainly appreciate it for what it is. It is the precursor to all of our favourite Assassin's Creed games, except from the uh, first four, of course. Games like Black Flag or Unity were all built from Assassin's Creed 3. Whether you like it or not, that's what happened. Assassin's Creed 3 was a fairly enjoyable game. There were some moments where I just didn't want to play, but then others where I was so invested in the story that I didn't want it to end. Assassin's Creed 3 can be a really enjoyable experience, and if you're bored of the newer Assassin's Creed games, and you want that classic Assassin's Creed back, 
then consider going back and playing one of the remasters like Assassin's Creed 3 or the Ezio Collection for example. This was a good choice on my end for wanting that classic feel of Assassin's Creed and I was hoping that Ubisoft would go back with it for Valhalla but perhaps they didn't and therefore I had to adapt and go back to an entry that I hadn't played yet so it was technically a brand new Assassin's Creed game for me. I could recommend Assassin's Creed 3 to someone who wants that classic feel back from Assassin's Creed, especially because of the new way Assassin's Creed is going forward. And although that Ubisoft aren't going to change back to the original formula, I know that I can play these older games. Assassin's Creed 3 I would happily go back to and play. I found it really enjoyable and most of the characters were funny and really charismatic. I could recommend Assassin's Creed 3 to most Assassin's Creed fans, and that's good enough. I'd say if you love Assassin's Creed and you haven't played Assassin's Creed 3 yet, go pick it up. It'll be really cheap at this point, and you'll have a blast with it. But that was Assassin's Creed 3. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, then subscribe and turn on that notification button so you don't miss another upload from me. So thank you and goodbye.